Hey guys, welcome to Open Studio. You're watching us right here on Cape Town TV. As always, I'm your host for today's show. My name is Danny Cambo. And yes, our favorite people are back. Jimmy has brought us another guest. All right, they're from an amazing organization called Realistic Child and Youth Care Center. Okay, so we're going to get into conversation with that in quite a bit. So for those that's tuning in, um, you might recognize him, you might not recognize him, but today you're going to know all about him. So guys, welcome to the show. Thank you yeah, for so having us. Oh, you're welcome. So for those that's watching at home now that's seeing you guys for the first time, we're going to start with you. Um, can you introduce yourself to us? Right. My name is Lomi Haya Matewana. I'm from Port Elizabeth. I'm part of the Realistic team. I work as a fundraiser, public relations, and marketer okay. of the organization. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, my name is Sepo Maribami. Uh, I'm from Pulukwane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm part of uh, Realistic. I've been with the organization for, I think, the past nine to ten years now. So, Mr. Yes. Mr. Tsepo, where does the name Jimmy come in? You know, most <laughs> the African people, it's, 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 they, they, they used to give you a Sutu yeah. name, if you're a Sutu, <laughs> like Misutu name, and they bless you yeah. with the English name. Ish. So, yeah. Yeah, so just to get now um, down to business, um, okay. Realistic um, Child and Youth Care Center. So, Realistic on its own, we, we spoke um, earlier on about what the organization does. So, for those who's just hearing this for the first time, can you just tell us a little bit more about Realistic as a whole on its own? Okay, I think the best thing is maybe <coughs> just to uh, clear mm. what is this Realistic Child and Youth Care Center. Okay. Realistic, like I said uh, the previous time, is an organization on its mm. own that started in 2004. It was started by Solomon Madigani. Mm. However, St. Francis, it was, it's an institution on its own, which was started, uh, which, wa which was set back uh, or was established by the Anglican Church Okay. Back in the, I think, 95 to 100 mm. years ago, uh, it was set in 1918 to address that issue of the epidemic flu of the, of the 1918. But over the years, it evolved to become a residential program for vulnerable children. Okay. But <coughs> with, with the program running over the years, uh, two years back, Realistic was asked by the social development to mm. take over St. Francis because Realistic has been doing great job in terms of uh, youth development uh, programs. So they say in order to build up St. Francis, can they take over St. Francis? And that's where the name change came in, which is now called Realistic Child and Youth Care Center. Wow. So, so just to clear it, St. Francis was not closed down. It's just wind up to become a Realistic Child and Youth Care Center. So we're still operating in the same premises the same program but we're just making it better okay yeah. so when we speak about vulnerable children what exactly are we speaking about yes realistic child and youth mm. care center right serves as a residential uh, placement center for vulnerable male children only male focus, children. yes okay. for male children who have suffered many forms of violent abuse or neglect at home so we provide holistic care mm. for them at the center at the moment we take in children who are from the ages of three mm. till 17 years old okay. all the children who are referred to our facility are placed there by the courts mm. or the department of social development and oh, wow. social workers yes well so do you, do you know maybe why is it only males and not females okay yeah uh, back in the days uh, when it was said like that, uh, Realistic was not there. But there are other organizations which mm. are similar to us that only takes females. And then the, and it's not, clo it's not far away from us, uh, the, the organization that only takes uh, females. So uh, us focusing on males, it, it, it actually balances the things. But there are organizations next to us, like Lubum, that focus also on both females and males. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so if we speak about I know um, children being placed into a, a place of safety basically that's what we can call it a place of safety yes. they must have gone on, um, through trauma with them during their life you know and for them being so young so what are the, the cases that you guys are dealing with currently in terms of you know those kids coming what what are, are they facing okay um, l let me answer that one since I'm the <laughs> social <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like the, the the stuff you mentioned uh, these children who obviously were neglected, uh, yeah. sexually abused, you understand? So when, when, when uh, cases like that are reported to the police, the Department of Social Development get involved. When the Department of Social Development gets involved, the case is opened. Mm. The case go to the court. 
they decide the child who is going to be removed from the parent to us, which is the residential care for the vulnerable children. So mm. when they are removed from there, they are placed to us. But with us, there are therapeutic programs that are in place for them. Yeah. So obviously we don't work alone. We work with your Red Cross. We work with other institutions of like your Safe Line, where yeah. they'll do trauma counseling. But we also have our own social workers. We have our own occupational therapists that will do our own uh, mm -hmm. therapeutic work there. But obviously with the help of other institutions. Other institutions. Yeah. Okay. So what are the numbers that you're dealing with currently? At the moment, mm. the centre has 29. Okay male children mm -hmm. right however we have the co the capacity to accommodate 45 over 45 yeah. children okay. so because we focus on family reunification some children leave mm. they go back when the situation at home has been sorted out and yeah. the courts have agreed for them to go home some go home yeah. we get new ones so the the number of children does fluctuate mm. but um, the center is uh, able to accommodate, to accommodate more, them, more yeah. children so yes. we, we're speaking about boys now and they, they've gone through trauma uh, you can you find some that might have anger issues how do you deal with them how do you manage them you know how do you control them basically yeah. what are the challenges there the challenges is anger problem. Yes, <laughs> anger. Like yeah. So yeah, sometimes they take their angers on windows, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so we can spend almost let's say twenty eight thousand on just windows mm -hmm. per maybe a period of three months, you understand? So but I, uh, that's how they express their, their anger. Mm. Uh, and you know, you're not allowed to smack a child or to whip them. So cool. but yeah. we do have the child and youth care workers at the center. Some of them they live in the center, mm. so the children are, are they they are supervised 24 hours when let's say when they are not at school, in the in the center at the home they mm. are supervised they are under supervision, but you know when the child is throwing tantrums he's throwing tantrums but they are like I said they are institution that you know helps with uh, with, with, with 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 therapy that deals with anger management yeah. like we have kids that are attending, uh, your the therapy that said safe line program to deal with anger problems you understand others they are also we find that the situation the, <coughs> the situation is worse so what happened is uh, the medical doctor get get involved in most cases mm -hmm. and then there is diagnosis and there is medication so most of them or if not 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 most some of them to be to be precise they are on medication okay yeah so if they stabilize them they are stable you know when you go through trauma there's post-traumatic stress disorder yes, so, so yes. obviously you if, if you have that kind of stress you need to have some some type of medication yes. so it does work for them okay yeah yeah so they are getting medical help and yes, also they are. they are getting counseling support and, yes and yeah. all right so we're gonna take a short break quickly guys i'm gonna Again, so when we come back from from the break, we're gonna tap a bit more into detail with it, with how you guys really are helping these children um, improve. So for those that's watching at home, guys, I urge you to not go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. All right, guys, welcome back. You're watching Open Studio right here on Cape Town TV. As always, I'm your host today. So my name is Danny Kambua. So we're going to continue our conversation today. I've got two amazing guests with me today from Realistic Ch um, Child and Youth Care Center. All right, we spoke earlier on about the organization, how you guys are helping um, children that have gone through trauma, specifically boys, um, also placing them into this safe, safe environment, you know, to, to help counsel them and, and, and treat them, whether it is medically. All right, so just to continue our conversation, you guys mentioned that you are running various programs, you know, to help these young boys um, that has gone through different trials um, d during the, 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 the young life, so to speak. So what are these, these, these programs that you guys are currently doing, I if you can get it into details? Yes, like I said before, the children, you know, okay, they start from the age of three to 17 years, okay. right? So they need the stimulation and mm. skill development and, and various life skills programs. Mm. So we offer developmental programs therapeutic programs mm. and educational programs okay. right for them and each